it's Friday the 6th of January 2017. Welcome to today's United Kingdom talk. When it cold last night? Now usually, well always, I have my heating on timer and it's kind of set for an hour to come on an hour before I get home from work. And I got in last night and I thought, do you know, it's still a bit chilly in here. And on on checking my internal thermometers, my not not inside me, dear, either end. You know, thank God we're not cats. Look how they have to have their temperature tested. You know, oh, oh. <laughs> oh how awful. Uh, my temperature internally was saying only 15 degrees. At least it'll be about 17 before you start thinking, oh, yeah, it's nice and comfortable. It was a little bit chilly here in the Royal Berkshire Mirable Studios last night. So that was uh, uh, last night. Well, uh, I was working at uh, the two brewers last night and I, I saw a brand new singing duo, or new to me anyway, called Heart and Soul. Oh, it was fantastic. They were doing Motown songs at Glory Gaynor. I think there was um, uh, My Guy, uh, you know, from The Temptations, I Will Survive. What, was, what else did they sing? Oh, it was fantastic. And it wasn't that busy last night, but all the kids were up and dancing. You know, it just goes to show you don't need Beyonce or Jay-Z to get a party going. No, they were fantastic. So nice, very nice heart and soul. I wish I'd got the camera. Trouble is, when you're working, you know, you're working the sound and the lights. And I don't like to leave the position for any reason, really. But I wish I'd have gone round the front uh, with my camera last night and did a little video for you of them uh, performing. Fantastic last night. Um, I've got a bit of a result. Now, you know, you know the trouble I've I had. I've had a little problem with uh, being charged something on my phone bill. Ten pounds. Ten pounds for um, a call to... Uh, where's it? I've got it here somewhere. For a call to... Six, oh, it's not, it was a text message to 65023. Anyway, if you're watching the show a couple of days ago, you'll know that I contacted three and they bent over backwards to try and assist me with this problem. And yesterday afternoon or last night, I got up from my afternoon sleep. Two hours every night, we must have an afternoon sleep, dear. And it was a message on my phone by some company that um, said I hadn't signed up to a regular thing at all. I'd made some sort of one payment to this number. And I don't remember ever making it. I don't. However, when I went to type in the numbers on my phone, 65 and then 023 came up. So it's quite possible that at some point I've texted this to someone. I don't know what it is. No idea what it is. Anyway, um, they're going to refund me the £10. And apparently what they do is send you a text message, which has got some sort of voucher on it. And then I simply take that to the post office and cash it for £10. And they said that would take up to seven days. So we'll see what happens. But once again, I have to say the customer service from, from three is extre was extremely good uh, with with this problem, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the flags are flying for the three telephone organisation, which is completely different to what it was about twenty years ago. They were the worst ever three years ago, so they've really pulled their socks up. So good on your three there. I was talking to some blokes in the um, uh, changing room today, uh, actually, about New Year's Eve. What did you do New Year's Eve and various clubs and some people stayed at home and and what have you? And I said the fireworks in London, you know, are quite spectacular. We have fireworks in, in London. We've been going for a few years now. Um, you now have to pay to go and see them. Now, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's something like about £10. If you don't want to pay your £10, then simply get in a lift and go up a block of flats nearby. Uh, if you can get in, because a lot of them got the entry phones and all that. So perhaps you know someone who lives in a block of flats around the Thames. Just get in their house, go up in the left and watch it from the balcony or from the window. You get uh, such a good view from there. But if you can't do that, you, you or, or on a hill, is it is it Primrose Hill? I think some people went to Primrose Hill in North London to watch them from there. I'm sure there's there's many, many places in London where you can go up the top of a hill and watch the fireworks from there. If not, you can pay your £10 and go buy the Thames. Now, I don't have a problem paying the £10, although it is only about 12 minutes worth of fireworks. Um, again, not too bad. You know, 12 minutes of fireworks is actually enough. By the all, all my neck, you know, all, 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 your neck's starting hurting, you're starting to feel a bit cold in the feet. What I do have a problem with is getting there and getting back again. Can you just imagine that? 
because you'd have nowhere to park. The only way you could do it is by train. And then everyone's coming in at the same time. You've got a jostle for a good position. I bet they're all packed together like that. Uh, and, and then once you've seen the fireworks, of course, which, which is probably quite an uncomfortable experience, I would imagine, uh, then you've got to get home again. And there's all these crowds of people trying to get on buses and tubes. No, I, I just wouldn't want to do it, would you? Perhaps you've been to the fireworks in London, have you? What was it like? Do let us know. Send us in a little email. I'll put a message at the bottom of this, OK? Uh, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Alternatively, I think my, maybe next year. I'm not convinced that I want to work New Year's Eve next year. I don't find it exciting at all. I find normal nights, my, like tonight. Tonight I'm doing my karaoke in King's Cross. And I'm quite excited about that. I'm more excited about that now tonight than I was doing New Year's Eve. It just has no interest to in me whatsoever, I'm afraid, anymore. Um, so I don't know what I'll do next year. Maybe, maybe we should just go out in the garden with the United Kingdom talk television cameras. Some sort of selection of bit. I could take out my clock outside and at the stroke of 12 I could start lighting sparklers and things like that and giving you a little show like that we're, we're thinking ahead here you know god god bless that I'm still here let me just touch this piece of false wood over here you know what do you think of that idea just a suggestion now <coughs> talking of my that's a lot better my cough believe it 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 really is um talking of of uh, of Central Station where I'm doing the karaoke. We do that, of course, there on Monday as well. But Monday this week, we've got a train strike. Oh, here they go. And it's still to do with someone pushing a button to open a set of doors. Now, I was just talking to Ray Reynolds on the phone earlier. And uh, we think it shouldn't be allowed because those trains, surely they should be classed as essential services, shouldn't they? Like the police the very important policemen, the very important fire people, the very important ambulance drivers. Shouldn't trains come on that same thing? Because people just can't get to work or they don't can't get the timing right or anything like that. It's a blooming nightmare. It really is. And foolishly, I thought, oh, well, if there's a train... I thought to myself, how stupid am I? Listen to this, right? So I thought, well, if there's a train strike Monday, the traffic will probably be at its worst so I know what I'll do to avoid the traffic. What I'll do is leave my stuff there Friday because I'm not doing anything over the weekend. I could leave my stuff there Friday and then on Monday come in by train. And I'm walking along and suddenly I thought, well, you can't do that because there's no trains. <laughs> I bet you've done stupid things like that, haven't you? I know you have. Blooming train strikes. Uh, some messages from yesterday's show. Uh, Ray Reynolds says, good evening, viewers. But I haven't got this right one here. Just a moment. I've got the right show here. Yes. Good evening, viewers. Ray Reynolds writes, Benny Hill, 1970s Thames Television, Merry Friday. Yes, it's a Merry Friday today, Ray, not yesterday. Don't forget. Oh, take the decorations down. One moment, please. Just a moment. Very important. Thank you, Ray. Oh, that, that's it. <laughs> Christmas decorations are down. Thank you. Uh, shall I keep this? Does anyone want this star? Anyone want this? Who wants the star? Star of wonder, star of light, westward leading step. The kings aren't they? I don't think the kings have arrived yet. The three kings have not yet arrived yet. Who wants this Christmas star? I don't think I'll use it again next year. Come on. First, first customer served. Who wants the Christmas star? I'll send it to you. Let me know. I think I might have to make you pay the postage and packaging, though. It's going to be at least a fiver, isn't it, eh? Now, the good news is I'm only here for 20 minutes today because my dinner is in the oven and I'm not going to have that burnt. Uh, yes, going back to uh, Ray Reynolds' email. Don't forget to take him down. Thank you, Ray. My Christmas decoration is now done. That's it. Isn't that shocking? That's sort of the only Christmas decoration. Uh, you don't class this as a Christmas decoration, do you? My Ponzi Eater. My Ponzi Eater. This, pe this this eats people. This, oh. oh, no, sparkly. I ate sparkly. You must be warned, if you want that star, it is covered in sparkly, OK? Um, Ray says, uh, the 6th, the 12th night. Yes, they've got, it's gone now. My Christmas decorations is gone. The Ponzi Etta is looking great. Almost as Ponzi as the presenter. Make sure you water it. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, that does feel a bit dry. I'll put some water in there. You will know. You will know. But you see, the trouble is these these seem to be a little bit um, oh, what's the word? sensitive. Too much water, it dies. 
Too little water, it died. You can't win, dear. You, I have to find a happy medium. A happy medium. Do you know any happy mediums? No, me neither. Uh, hello to Danny Davis, who says, on the subject of Salford, it's not Salford, it's Salford, up in Manchester, parts of it are very beautiful. I live ten minutes from there. I bet you don't live in a beautiful bit, Danny, do you? Oh, my God, no, thank you. You don't walk around there with your mobile phone in your hand during the daytime or late at night or, or, or any time. They'll have that out of your hands quicker than you can say Chris Reard and United Kingdom talk. How quickly can you say that? There's something for you to try later. Hello to Vectis, who says, Cuddle, Cuddler Fox, damn fox, run out in front of my Astra and wrote it off. What, you wrote the fox off? How cool you are. Vectis goes around writing foxes off. I think that's what you mean, isn't it? Huh? Poor little fox. All it wanted to do was go out and find some food for its family and you run over it. Horrible man. <laughs> or was it the dust cart? Oh, no, it was your car, was it? Hello to Simon. On the subject of reliability, Simon says I'm very reliable. I'm always at my venue when I'm doing karaoke two hours before starting in case something got two hours. Blimey, that's a, that's a little bit too exciting, isn't it? I'm generally at this place an hour before I start. I like to be there an hour before I start. Um, uh, I like fast food. I rang one up last night and said, do you do takeaways? He said, yes, it's great. What is six minus two? Yes. Uh, Simon says, kissing your cat's whiskers. I was saying yesterday, I quite like the feel of my cat's whiskers against my face. Um, really? Oh, no. Don't know where they have been, Chris. Did you know eight out of ten cats prefer whiskers? Yes, the other two have to shave every morning, apparently. Will you stop it with these bloody jokes, Simon? Simon says that Salford Keys is OK, but Salford is a bit rough. Salford. Salford is a bit rough. There are a lot of nice people. Oh, as rough as ours is there. Don't go to Salford. You know, if you get a job at the BBC and it's in Salford, go and cancel that job immediately. You don't want to work there, dear. Talking to zombies, Chris, here is a question. Are necrophiliacs the their worst nightmare? <laughs> Not saying nothing. Simon says, shopping in pyjamas. Chris, no. As if I go shopping, I just ring for takeaways. I'll stop the jokes, Simon. I'll, I'll stop reading them out. You've got so many jokes that one, two, three, four, five posts. Can you not condense your posts into one post, dear? Go, I can't keep up with you, for Christ's sake. Thank you, Simon, for your kind remarks and uh, conversations there. Now, look at this old bag moaning. Honestly, a mother sent a £325 bill to another mother after her daughter came home from a play date. Uh, what's a play date? What, what is, a, is, is that like a, a nursery or something? A play date with scuff marks and pen on her Italian fur booties. Fashion designer. Oh, it's one of those, dear. I mean, I don't know if I want to even read any further. Fashion. And she, there's a picture of her doing a selfie, trying desperately. What do they look like? And she's got the air up here. She's got the, she's got the Croydon hair lift, this woman. Fashion designer Sarah Louise Bryan, this is in today's Daily Mail, was furious when her three-year-old daughter Isabella came, came home with scuff marks and pen marks after an afternoon with a friend. She fired an angry email to the child's mother, Nicola Gibbs, 33, demanding that she pay to replace the shoes by February the 1st at a charge of £325. Are you stupid, woman? Why on earth... Would you allow your daughter to go out with really nice shoes on? What do you expect, dear? How stupid can you be? And of course, there's there's all these pictures of 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 this woman. Here. Oh, I mean, what does she look like? And she's got oh, mate, what fashion, but right? she's got this bra on, which like looks like it's made of curly human hair. I mean, what does she look like? They're so bloody important, these people, isn't it? Here's the letter. Here's the letter. Here's the letter that... So she starts... that She can't even write properly. She starts the the letter, So Isabella. That's how it... Not dear sir, not madam, nothing like that. So Isabella has just come home from her play date with your child. I am disgusted to see her new Italian leather shoes are all scuffed and have a Sharpie mark on them. 
Below is the bill for these replacing because they cannot be fixed. These are fine Italian leather. As a designer, I do not want my child to look anything less than pristine. Oh, go away, you stupid old bag. Bill for replacement pair of Italian fell boots. £325 to be paid by the 1st of February 2017 before I take this hire. Do you know, I'd tell her to take it higher. I mean, surely a judge would just laugh at her, wouldn't they? What do you expect to happen to children? They get dirty. They get scuff marks. They get cuts and bruises, for Christ's sake, woman. Get yourself a life. Get yourself a life. I bet she's got a bit of money anyway. It's usually... It's usually... Oh, my God. What has she got on? There's another picture of her now. Not only has she got a bra made of human hair, she's got a, an entire skirt made out of... Oh, it's not human... Oh, it is human. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, it's disgusting. It's not. It's not head hair. <laughs> it's not hair from the head. That's all I'm saying. And she's got an entire dress made out of this sort of hair. Oh, what do they look like? Christ. Dear me, dear me. I don't know what's wrong with some people. They just moan and moan and moan. And it's all about money, isn't it? All about money all the time. Now, I am lucky to be here. Last year, apparently, this is once again in the mail this morning. Last year was really a terrible year to be a celebrity. Number of famous deaths in 2016 is only expected once every 200 years. Look at this. Uh, last year saw the tragic deaths of unusually high number of famous icons as you well know, uh, including David Bowie, Prince Fidel Castro, George Michael, of course, and Carrie Fisher. Uh, according to statistical analysis, analysis by a mathematician, deaths were unusually high. He said it only happens once uh, in a century or two in, the, in, in, in term of famous deaths. So there we are. Well, we all know. So I'm lucky to be here, really, you know, what with me being a television personality, as I am. Yes, a celebrity on the internet. <laughs> Oh dear, we're not here for long today, going to do the birthdays today. I have to say uh, happy birthday today to Benjamin Clifford. He is my niece's husband. Happy birthday, Benji. Are you 30 today? Your 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 birthday hasn't come up on my Facebook thing. One moment, please. Let me just finish my thing. Oh. Ooh. Your birthday hasn't come up on my Facebook thing this morning, so uh, you, uh, I don't think you've entered it in on there. You've got, you've got to set your birthday. So you're very lucky that my dear, dear sister, that is your mother-in-law, always beware, beware of the mother-in-law. <laughs> yes, your mother-in-law has told me that it's your birthday today. Happy birthday, Benjamin Clifford. How old are you today? 30, 30, 31, something like that. Happy birthday, Benji. Happy birthday to Keith Lavender, to... Alessia Al 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 Alosi, to Laura Clennell. Hello, Laura. Looking good today, Laura, darling. To Reg Logan, to Leslie Smith, to the lovely Shane Gannon. 29 now, Shane, aren't you? My word. Happy birthday, Shane. And to Kiko Morsampa. Lots of birthdays today. Let's sing the song. And then I can have my dinner. Dinner is ready. I can smell burning chips in the oven as we speak to it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right? There's our, our lovely people whose birthdays it is today. Finally today, uh, if you have a look at my Facebook, my Facebook, incidentally, if you're not on there, it's Chris Reardon UK. So facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon in the UK, that's where you'll find my Facebook. I've posted a little uh, charity thing for you to have a look at. Uh, it's UK Homes for Heroes. And uh, these, uh, this charity um, is to dedicate hostel-style accommodation to our ex-service personnel and only them providing a safe, clean living environment to help gain permanent home to provide counselling services. That's for um, all the people that were in our armed forces. So have a little look at look at, look, look at that, okay, my darlings, on my Facebook, um, uh, uh, be just under this actually, on my Facebook thing, Chris Reardon UK, facebook.com, Chris Reardon UK. Being a Friday night, it's karaoke night tonight at Central Station. Join us all at Central Station, me and the 
the lovely people who work behind the bar and the managers and uh, all, all our wonderful regular karaoke singers tonight. Karaoke at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at midnight. Karaoke tonight and every Friday from 8.30 till midnight. Starts at 8 o'clock. I, I just said that, didn't I? Starts at 8.30, finishes at midnight. And um, that's every Friday, OK? See you there, Central Station, Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Have a lovely Friday. See you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye.